boys and girls. Today we are going to read chapter 8 of our book, Elmer and the Dragon, which is a trilogy, the second book in our trilogy by Ruth Stiles Gannant and illustrated by Ruth Chrisham Gannant. Now the last time we were together, I believe that Elmer had been shoveling and he hit upon something that made a noise. So maybe this week we'll get to see what the treasure actually is. Let's see. Flute woke up and trilled so loudly that he startled the king and the queen and Elmer and the dragon wide awake. The other canaries had been up for an hour and were crowding around to see what was happening under the tree. Everybody peered into the big hole and gasped. A real treasure chest with a ring in the top. But how will we ever get it out? The king looked at Elmer and Elmer looked at the dragon. Dragon, do you think you could put your tail through the ring and pull up the chest? I'll try, said the dragon. Puffing up with importance, as the swarms of canaries moved aside for him, he backed up to the hole, stuck his tail down through the ring, and pulled. Nothing happened. Couldn't you pull harder, suggested the king. That's exactly what I was going to try. Just let me catch my breath, said the dragon, somewhat crossly. After all, I'm not used to lifting heavy chests with my tail. He took a deep, deep breath and pulled very, very hard. And suddenly the chest moved. He grunted and strained and struggled and panted and slowly, slowly hoisted the chest out of the hole. Far enough, yelled Elmer. Now walk around and set it down. Oh, and there's Elmer and the dragon and the chest is in the dragon's tail. See the ring around his tail? Crash! The chest fell down on the pine needles and the dragon staggered off to sit down while the canary shouted, Bravo! Quiet, quiet, yelled King Can the Eleventh. I am now about to tell you the last part of the secret. The key to this chest. The key to this chest. Well, anyway, this is the last part of the secret. My illustrious ancestor, King Can the First, stole the key from the settlers, and the key to this chest is in my nest. Go get it, flute. No, never mind. I'll go get it myself. The king flew up to his nest and down again with a big brass key in his beak. Elmer pried out the dirt in the keyhole with his jackknife and put in the key. Click. The key turned. Elmer threw back the lid and picked up a note lying on top of a piece of heavy canvas. Can you read what it says? asked the king. Yes, said Elmer, feeling sick with excitement as he read the note aloud. This chest was left here by Oliver Hinkle for the purpose of helping him and his friends to settle on this island when he returns in the event that he does not return to find the chest himself, the chest becomes the property of whoever discovers it. The following is a list of the items herein buried. Twelve pewter plates, six pewter cups, twelve table settings, sterling silver, one iron skillet, two iron pots with lids, one coffee mill, a can of each of salt and sugar, one axe, one tinderbox, 
five bags of seeds, including squash, corn, cabbage, wheat, and millet, one gold watch and chain belonging to my wife Sarah, one sterling silver harmonica, and six bags of gold pieces. See, that's the list. And it's written in cursive. You'll learn how to do that one day. Rubbish, interrupted the king. Isn't there anything but cooking utensils? Let me finish the list, said Elmer. He continued reading. Well, Miss Michelle read the whole list and then read that. So that was our whole list. Right? Gold. I knew it. Remember, it had six pieces, right? Six, six bags of gold pieces. Gold. I knew it. Just think of it, queen. Six bags of gold, trilled the king. What will you do with them, king dear? Asked the queen. I won't do anything with them. I'll just have them and be rich. Shall I unpack now? Asked Elmer who was anxious to see the sterling silver harmonica. By all means, ordered King Can the Eleventh, strutting back and forth in front of the twittering canaries. Elmer unpacked everything and at last came to the sterling silver harmonica. He blew on it gently and the sound was so sweet that all the canaries stopped chattering and listened. The king listened too, with tears in his eyes. When Elmer had finished playing, the bear went over the mountain. The king flew up to a branch of pine and said solemnly, Elmer, on behalf of the queen and myself and all the others, Feather Islanders, I want to thank you and the dragon, your dragon friend, for digging up the treasure and thereby ridding us of the plague of curiosity. I now present you with that silver harmonica, which you play so beautifully, and three of the six bags of gold. And to this brave dragon, I present the gold watch and chain. Elmer, fasten it around his neck. Elmer hooked the chain around the dragon's neck, arranging the watch at his throat. How's that? asked Elmer. I can't see it, but it feels just fine said the proud baby dragon. And there's the dragon with the watch around his neck. The birds all clapped their wings and then the dragon, who really didn't care for speeches, remarked, looking at those pots and plates makes me hungry. Let's celebrate with eating something. Goodness, said the queen. I don't believe we've ever had a celebration before. What shall we eat? Tangerines, said Elmer. I bet you've never tasted one. Elmer peeled 12 of the 31 tangerines he had left in his knapsack and put one on each of the 12 pewter plates. Then he hurried off to pick a good mess of skunk cabbage and ostrich ferns for the dragon. When he came back, everyone crowded around to feast. Elmer sat beside the dragon and ate nine tangerines all by himself. Then he played turkey in the straw on the sterling silver harmonica while the king did a jig on a pewter plate. Soon everyone joined in the dancing and they danced themselves to sleep all over the pine needles under the great tall tree. Up oh, and there's Elmer playing the harmonica and see all the canaries down there dancing. And there's the baby dragon. And that was the end of our chapter. Now we just read chapter eight. So our next chapter should be which one? You're right, chapter nine. And that one is called farewell. So farewell means goodbye. So what do you think they might be doing? Or getting ready to do. Let's wait till next week to find out. Have a great day boys and girls. Bye-bye.